My name is Tall Biscuit of the Wild Podcast. Blue, please, on cynicalbrit.com. All right, so Stratum Live, eh? So I put up the Stratum video, and instantly I thought, people are going to ask about Stratum Live. So as soon as I was done with that, and, well, I insulted a few trolls, got people angry. It's pretty awesome. And then decided to go and film the live side of Stratum and try and give you a better picture of how this instance is now structured. Okay, freeze for a second. Story progression right here. This goes on from what used to happen in Stratholme, and things have now changed significantly. You should be aware of Balnazar. Balnazar was in the guise of the old Grand Crusader Dathroin, or whatever the hell his name was. When we ended up fighting him in the first place, you get the Grand Crusader down about 50%, and then suddenly, oh god! Big Dreadlord thing. Now, Balnazar was controlling the Scarlet Crusade, and the Scarlet Crusade wasn't really aware of this. However, this is what happened afterwards, so you can't really kill the Dreadlord. They just go back to their whole void thing, and then they pop out again. So what happened was Balnazar got the hell out of there, and then went on a killing spree, killed every single one of the remaining Crusaders in Stratholme, assuming there were any, and then raised them all up again as the undead, and is calling them the Risen. Now, the reason there's a bit of lore significance here is that the ruins of the Scarlet Enclave and the sort of Old Tears Hand area over in the Eastern Plaguelands are actually now full of these guys. They look almost identical. You know, there doesn't seem to be any other changes other than the fact that they are now undead. And I imagine there's going to be some serious questing involved there. So, when I said there wasn't really a lot of changes over at the Tears Hand area, that's technically correct. It's nothing you can really see in a flyover. But, that's the storyline of what's happened to them. That's why those guys are now undead. And as a result of that, and as we're going to see here as I speed through this dungeon, all of the Scarlet guys in the Cathedral and the live side of this are now very much dead. What you will also notice is that the guy we spoke to at the start there with the big sword is the same guy that we spoke to at the end of the little Aureus Rivendare video that I put out. So, this guy follows you all the way through the live and the dead side, and you're supposed to go on the live side first, you talk to that guy, and you do the stuff for him, blah blah blah, he asks you to kill Balnazar, and after you've done that, you're then asked to go to the dead side, which you're gonna see, and it's a much better way of telling the story as far as I'm concerned, it's also very convenient, it has the quest giver follow you and come to you, as opposed to the other way round. Which is kind of annoying. So, hey, I've done a quest, right? Now I've got to run all the way back. No, it makes sense that that guy is actually coming along with you. What doesn't make an awful lot of sense, I must admit, is the fact that he says, well, we are one of the, if not the best, organization for destroying the undead. But we're just going to hang around here for a while and let you do most of the work. And then once everything's dead, we'll come charging into the rescue. Yeah. Aside from that, the mobs are the same. With a few exceptions. See that? That's Commander Malor. You remember Malor the Zealous. That was the old guy who used to be there. And still he drops absolutely nothing. He was part of a quest, as I recall. What about Cannon Master Willy, you might ask? That's the nice new map, by the way. Well, let's make our way through here. I say you can expect the exact same stuff thrown at you that you saw in the first place. Yes, indeed, folks. Willy Hope Breaker. I'm terrified. Hope Breaker. Seriously. You thought he'd give him a better name other than Willy, you know? You can't really take that seriously. I bet he gets mocked by his fellow boss friends. Now, some of you might be happy to know that finally, because they've taken ammo out of the game for hunters and, well, everybody else, Willy no longer drops those miniature cannonballs, so you don't have them clogging up your inventory. Nobody wants them, I can't sell them, this sucks. It turns out they are completely gone now. Cannonball Runner's still there, though. That's important. Once again, as you will notice, the level range of a lot of these items has been reduced, with certain exceptions. There's a few things, like I said, the Crimson Felt Hat hasn't been reduced all that much. And things like Light Forge and the Tier Zero stuff, that is still the same as it always was. I expect all of that to get a massive revamp. I mean, why wouldn't it? Those of you expecting massive sweeping changes across the board are going to be disappointed, honestly. But... I don't think that's necessary. Really, I don't. There's just these little touches, like say, this guy used to be Galford the Archivist. He's now Instructor Galford. He still beats you up with a book and casts magic on you and everything. Even tries a good old pyroblast for good measure. 
Not going to let that happen. But it does give a little bit of a lease of life, or in this case, death, to the instance. For those of us who have been through this 50 or so times, it's nice to go back in at least once and just see what's changed. And honestly, I think that's what Blizzard wants. They're trying to encourage people to roll alts, and why wouldn't they? It's the kind of thing that keeps you playing, keeps you subscribed. It's a good business strategy. Uh, there we go. Balnazar indeed just decides to go au natural. Not even bothering with the skin suit this time. He doesn't do anything different. I'd like to say he does, but he doesn't. He doesn't even say anything different. But it makes far, far more sense for Balnazar to be there as opposed to the Grand Crusader, who we definitely killed. You know, we killed the Dreadlord as well, but Dreadlords just come back, apparently. That So says the lore, and you'll see there's an explanation of that in the quest after this. Now, what I'm going to show you after this is what happens when the quest giver comes along, what he says next, and then what's supposed to happen at the start of Deadside Stratum, which I did skip. So you are supposed to do these in order. Seems you can get into the service entrance regardless. I don't know if pre-maids have the key or whether or not you can just get in straight away. Oh, it used to be an issue with the key. Maybe that was changed a long time ago. I, pff, I don't think I've been inside Stratum for a very long time. Whatever the case, it's neat. It's a far better version of storytelling than in the previous one where you just had a bunch of quests. It's like, well, you could go here, I guess. There you go. And then you had to get the key, and yeah, it was all nonsense. Yes, yes, all my hate. Sounds like a bloody Linkin Park song. Right, now we get a bunch of long-winded text from the guy in the judgment. But he does explain what exactly was happening there. Gives you a little bit of background for Balnazar. And yes, we'll know Balnazar will be back. Being ganked by the level 80 undead mage in the style and orange hat was merely a setback in the mountains. So, once you've done all that, he'll then say, you you need to go to the dead side now and deal with Aureus Rivendare. Sadly, he doesn't send you there directly. There isn't actually a quest to go there at all. What you do is you just end up wandering over to the service entrance. You go in there and you'll find that he's hanging around in the chapel. It also doesn't give you an easy way out, which is something they do need to look into. You do need to run all the way back. However... Just bear this in mind, at least this is a little bit of a bonus. So, the undead run in the same way that they did in the first place when you clear out the Scarlet Cathedral. However, this time, this dude has brought some Argent Crusaders along to keep the aggro, so the vast majority of mobs will not attack you, because they're too busy attacking the guys in the shiny armor. Right. There you go. Just a quick look at them. They're all over the place. They will happily fight whatever they see, and indeed they will actually break some of the aggro off you if they see you being attacked. I'm going to skip forward to the start of the dead side just so I can show you the chapel and then we'll end it there. I haven't been in a lot of these lower level dungeons because honestly if I'm going to run them I really want to run them level appropriate but in this case because I'm not really showing off any big changes to mobs and bosses I'm showing off lore I think it's pretty appropriate. So in this case you do have these two parts tied together very nicely with this guy who's a perpetual character that goes through the two dungeons with you. I just think it's a way better way of telling a story. Now, I don't remember ever seeing that barrier effect before. Is that new? Maybe it is. Maybe it was something in Wrath that I haven't seen, but whatever the case, it's neat. There's a new quest available there as well, Argent Reinforcements. That wasn't in the game before. And that really about covers it, honestly. It's nice. It really is. They've done a good job of tying the story together a little bit better than previously, and they've put in quite a few advancements. I like the more dynamic nature of it now. It seems like you're actually progressing through something and that the NPCs are moving along with you as opposed to you just sitting around and artificially going into dungeons. My name's been Total Biscuit. That's been a look at Stratum and how the story and lore ties together in that regard in Cataclysm, and I will see you next time.